wouldn't you know it. I got a leak. Well, it looks like another repair video. back to the channel so today I'm working on a leaky hydraulic jack so has this ever happened to you your sister and family are heading out of town and on the way out they find they have a sticky brake caliper so they make a detour over to your place with their f-350 full of kids and gear and the only thing you have to help them out is your one and a half ton aluminum racing jack well that happened to me and now that poor jack is leaking like a sieve and it's becoming close to race season I'm gonna need that thing you know to help me out in the pit so Let's get to work and see if we can fix that leaky hydraulic jack. All right, so this is my little aluminum jack here that I like to take with me to uh, different types of autocross or road race events or whatever, and it's super lightweight. I love uh, how easy it is to move around and to carry, but it's got a leak, and the leak is in this area here, I believe, and uh, well, to diagnose or troubleshoot this a little bit further, I wanna get it weight on it. I wanna get a car underneath it, so I'm gonna lift up my uh, Camaro here and see if I can see where the leak starts. Now, um, before I do that, I want to clean everything. So it's got a lot of grease and stuff. It's been sitting around in the garage, sort of out of service uh, for a little while. So I want to make sure this is all clean and it's fairly clean because I was already uh, in here cleaning it, but we'll do a little bit more cleaning on this and we'll put it under the car and we'll see if we can get you guys in right there next to me and we'll see if we can find out where the leak starts but I think it's right in here. So let's uh, clean it up and get under the car. All right, so if you can see, I cleaned that area with basically some uh, cleaner, brake clean or whatever, and it is super clean. So if I'm gonna have a leak there, or if it's going to leak there, I should be able to see it right away. So let's get that under the car. All right, so hopefully we can see this now. It's under the car. And I'm about to start loading up this ram or lifting the car. Okay, so we've got wheels off the ground now. We're going to focus on that area and see if we can see any leakage. Okay, now you can start to see right by my finger there. There is some hydraulic fluid and I can see it actually leaking down that little little body there of the of the ram. Maybe I'll move you in a little closer. You can see now it leaking down here. All around here. So it's definitely leaking. Definitely something we need to address. And so what we'll do next is we'll take it onto the bench and we'll try to take this whole unit apart here and this is like a spring retainer almost like a overhead valve set up on a on an engine right so push down this retainer we should uh, be able to undo that retaining clip there this whole unit should come out i think we may have to remove this as well move this out of the way so we can actually get that out but that's the next step all right so unlike other jacks um, this bar is actually one piece and you'd have to take these two side plates off to get it off. Normally you can pull these apart and then allows you to uh, lift this forward, which then gives you more access to, you know, the pistons in here. Um, but this one is not like that. So what we have to do is we have to go in here and take out this little retaining clip and showing it from this side, you basically pull this little stud or this little shaft out and then you can get in and pull this out. So this side here, easy enough, and there you go. So that gives you a lot more access now to get in here and service this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is work on compressing the spring a little bit in this retainer here, and then getting that main uh, sir clip out. And so I think the way I'm gonna do that is use these holes, and then I can come in here and compress this 
And I can get in there with my little pick there, my little right angle pick or a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and I can start to get that circlip out. And hopefully this doesn't fire off into the stratosphere here. go. So that is now removed and I think the problem is definitely in here. So the next step is to loosen this and pull that piston out because it's threaded. I don't know if you can see that. It's threaded right into this aluminum body and I'm assuming that there's going to be a couple o-rings and stuff in there but we'll pull that apart next. Okay, 24 millimeter. There we go. Now I'm assuming there's going to be a bunch of fluid in here and whatnot, so we'll pull that out slowly. You're going to also loosen the uh, fill valve on here, the fill bolt. Is fluid but that's expected and then we've got this is the sort of the piston right here that we're talking about here so what we need to do here we go push the piston out and there is supposed to be an o-ring on here and the o-ring didn't come out so the o-ring stuck in the hole push that o-ring out of there the o-ring is here so we got the o-ring out now um, so now we got the o-ring out we'll try to find a, another o-ring of the same size and we'll replace that we we'll put that into the groove here in this little housing first and then our piston will go back in all right so we've got our o-rings here it looks to me like this one will fit this is a little bit uh, fatter but uh, I think this one will work. The idea of this is a touch smaller, which is what's going to seal on, on this unit here, right? So this is what we're pumping through and where all the fluid pressure is going to be behind. So we'll try that one first. And we have the other size up here just to check. And when we put these on this little piston here, this one's a lot looser than this one here on the left. So we're going to use the one on the left. It's a little bit smaller. ID, which should seal better on this. And one thing to note as well under the light, there's a lot of uh, scoring on this little piston here. So I'm going to have to dress that up. I've got some uh, Kratex. I'm going to smooth that out as best I can. But that could be another reason why there is some leakage. You can see right there. It is fairly scored. All right, so done some Kratex work here. Try to clean this up. Just taking the high metal off. You're not actually going to blend these grooves um, very much. You know, there's still some potential that this could leak, but uh, at least we're not going to get any uh, high metal there or anything to tear that O-ring. And of course, we're always going to use jack stands underneath a jack. So as long as this can get the car up and, uh, you know, we don't get a puddle of oil underneath it, I'm going to be okay. If that does bypass a little bit, well, we've got jack stands, right? Okay, hopefully you can see that, but there is a new O-ring in there. And that was a little fun putting it in there. You kind of have to use almost two picks. One to hold it in the groove and the other one to sort of get it so it sits in there. So I'm going to try and uh, see how that fits that piston now. All right. And there's a pretty good fit in here. You know, that is fairly tight. So lube it up a little bit and we'll put it all back together. Let's see if it leaks still. And one thing I didn't mention, but there is a little steel seat, which basically 
crush washer or a crush gasket of some sort and it crushes against this tapered end here and when you torque that down that seals off this outer body and then the inner body here or the piston or whatever you want to call it seals on that o-ring so this is what uh, basically these consist of inside I can take a little bit of the jack oil lubricate that now this side is the smaller side this is the side that goes through our retainer not this way so we'll have that facing us and there we go we have our steel seat and what we'll probably do is put the seat in first hard for you guys to see but I can see right in there and this goes back together fairly straightforward 24 mil tighten that down with the impact there nice and tight Okay, now we've got that tightened up. I'm going to hose this area down once again, clean everything completely off so it's bone dry. We're going to put the, uh, I guess you would call it the receiver for the jack handle. We're going to put that back on. Um, once I put the retainer on, of course, and the spring. And then, yeah, we'll uh, fill it up with oil, top it up, put it back under the car, and we'll see if we get any leakage again. Okay, well I ended up needing some way to compress the spring and I don't actually even want to touch it too much because this thing will basically launch um, with a lot of force, but I needed a way to compress the spring so I could get this retainer on and compress it further than I needed to so I'm not fighting with the retaining clip. So I put it in my bench vise and I've got three zap straps on there and I hope this is going to work because I'm trying to push that down really challenging especially when you're you know your head is in this area you don't want that firing off in your face so i think this is going to be the easiest thing to do right here and all i got to do now is get myself a little pair of pliers somewhere around here some ancient pliers and start that clip there we go it's basically in the spot that it needs to be pull up the retainer and cut those off so so there's one I can even fish this out of here should be able to yep and number two is up here there's number two wow is that ever crooked and then number three right here and we're very close. There. There, we got our spring and our retainer on and our retaining clip. The easiest way, I thought, again, use zap straps. Whatever. You have a little mini spring compressor. I don't know how you get around these little coils, though. I mean, it's almost like you're doing a strut. You got to think about the same thing if you're collapsing a strut and you're trying to put the top hat on and this would be where your stud was you got to compress that somehow maybe if you had some sort of a valve spring compressor from doing a set of springs on a set of cylinder heads maybe you could rig something up to hold it in here but zap straps for the win right now so what we'll do now is i'll finish putting on the receiver for the handle and we'll check out how it works all right we've got our retaining clip in both sides more fun to ha be had, but all you got to do is really, you know, get yourself a set of these picks. There's right angle picks and there's 45 degree picks. Um, even uh, take them and, and dull the end of them, the tip of them, don't so they're not so sharp. But these little picks work great. So uh, now we've got those retaining clips in there. We'll service it. Open up our fill port here. And we've got ourselves some more. Hydraulic jack oil. I wouldn't use anything else. Some people uh, may use transmission fluid, automatic transmission fluid, or brake fluid. Use the right stuff. Fill that up. 
making a mess because I'm using my other hand here. All right, we don't want this to be wet because we want to see if there's any leakage. Clean that up a bit more. Tighten that guy up like so. One more little clean. Okay. So do this a few times up and down and we'll get all the air out. All right, back under the car. Now we'll load it up and lift the car. See if we get any leakage down by that piston there. Everything still looks dry. We'll go up. Wheels off the ground right now. Nearing the, I guess, midpoint of the stroke. gonna leave it like that see what happens but so far I don't see any leakage and if you remember you could see it start to form around the base of the spring it was getting wet and then it was starting to sort of weep down where my fingers are here on the body of that sort of aluminum ram I guess you would call it but I don't see any leakage right now so so far it's a success Let's come back in about another five or so minutes and see what happens. All right, well, it's the next day now. No, I'm just kidding. Look at the area again under some real sort of focused light and I don't see any leakage, none whatsoever. So I think it's a success. So that's basically how you change the, uh, the seals around the pistons here of these little jacks and give them another life, renewed life. So a lot of people may throw these out, but all they need is like a 10 cent O-ring or maybe a 5 cent O-ring and they're good to go. So I will monitor this jack and continue to use it. And hopefully all my leakage problems are solved. Before, there used to be a considerable puddle underneath this thing after, you know, five or 10 minutes of load on it like this. And I've got absolutely nothing. It's bone dry. All right, well, that's the end of this video, and I hope you learned something about hydraulic jacks. Although there are many different designs out there, they all work on the same principle. And if you do have a leaky jack, it is almost certain to be an O-ring or a seal of some sort. And I'm almost at 500 subs, so if you like the channel, you like the content, please subscribe, like, share, comment. It helps a guy out. And as always, thank you, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.